I'm Kate Clark, and I got asked to do a talk here, and I said that I wouldn't come and do a talk if I wasn't allowed to do a workshop. I'm here as well. My name is Nayla, yeah. and um, I don't have a museum background, but I'm a cartoonist. You're a cartoonist? Excellent. Lovely. My favourite. Fantastic. So, in, into graphics, drawing, and yes. lovely. Okay. Okay, so we've had a, pla a planner in the room. Fantastic. We've got an architect in the room. I know about you. Yes, I'm <laughs> a bit of counsellor and a bit of the. Oh, okay, I think you've been a counsellor and theatre. Yeah. That's an interesting background. <laughs> the thing about that is A, to know who you are, which is fantastic. Hello, everybody. But also, just to think about the range of different backgrounds that we've got in the room from the Royal Mail through to cartooning, through to teaching, through to education, through to landscape, through to you know, engineers, project management, business. I mean, I don't know how many other disciplines you would get such a range of people around the room and such a range of background, all of which, of course, are completely relevant to what we do, which is the point of heritage. I'm going to come back to that. My friend here on, on the left, yeah. she lives in York and she walks the same route every day down the shambles. And the route is. Okay. The heritage she sort of lives and breathes it of the city. So what does she learn? Mm. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about gener generic architecture being in places where you could be anywhere in the world, but there's a vernacular. And so she learned about buildings and architecture. Yeah, but also she... sense of place. And sense of place. How did she feel? Well, happy about it. I think you were happy. content <laughs> yeah, okay. to be walking no, that road every day. Okay, yeah. so happy. We were talking about um, actually having spent the last 24 hours at, uh, basically at home. <laughs> and could you have a heritage experience with your yes. with your house? Excellent. Um, and James. James um, lives in the 1920s house, and um, there's the dichotomy between the most comfortable places in the house, which tend to be the bits that have been altered with modern windows and the nicest places to be in heritage terms, um, which still have original features and original windows and things, and whether heritage makes you feel, in that sense, the built heritage makes you feel comfortable in different ways. So, so there's feelings yeah. around comfort? Yeah. And what do you learn? Yeah, you have to make sometimes you have to make sacrifices for heritage. <laughs> As heritage professionals, it's terribly easy for us to forget that and to lose sight of the kind of personal feelings that people experience when they encounter heritage places. And one of it's one of the real challenges that we've got to guard against. The other thing that I did in that exercise, which I was doing quite deliberately, was asking you to listen to the person beside you and to relay back what they had said. Because again, I think that in heritage we often are not very good at listening. We don't hear other people and we don't hear their feelings and connections. What are we trying to do here? Why are we here? To preserve the things we like. To preserve the things, preserve the things we like. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Why else are we here? To inform change. To inform change. To help interpret and enhance. Okay, so we're about interpreting, enhancing. What else? Well, in a sense, bridging um, okay. between our lives. Bridging today and lives Old in the new. past. Okay. Elitist, posh, what are the other? Conservative. Conservative. Extravagant, maybe. I often get the, the question, do you get paid for that? Extravagant, <laughs> I like that, do you get paid for that? <laughs> there is an issue on the ground, I think, between a lot of the perceptions and the language of the talk and what Perifuge is about, the way we talk about it as a group and the language that we use, and I think a lot of the language that's out there. And this is one of our challenges as a heritage profession, is how do we close that gap? How do we make that connection? How do we deal with that kind of language? Because as Don says, if these are the people who are, if, to 
to quote a technical term, our authorising environment, <laughs> then they are the people who are funding us, who are supporting us. And, you know, we've all had the experience of trying to persuade a politician of the value of heritage. So our challenge, is it, are they going to close that gap for us? No. Okay. So it's up to us to close that gap. And how do we close that gap? I'm thinking about the value and importance of what we do. Um, can anybody tell me what heritage consists of, please, apart from buildings? You can have that one for free. What else does heritage consist of? Memories. Memories. People. What else? Practices. Practices. What else? Landscapes. Places. What else? Landscapes. Landscapes. Keep going. Traditions. Traditions. Keep going. Costumes. Artifacts. Food. Hang on, I can't write that fast. Costumes. <laughs> Food, keep going. Landscapes, yeah. What else? Fields. Fields. Art. What else? Sorry? Boundaries. What else? Of these things, how many of them are intangible? Give me some of the intangible things that we had up here. Language. Lang oh, right. Where's language. 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 Interestingly, what a lot of us are trained to do and deal with in the way heritage works is not intangible heritage. I mean, Pache Museums, who I think are much stronger in the intangible space. But a lot of what we are taught to deal with are buildings, monuments, spaces, places, things. So when we, yet when we think about heritage, we're focusing a lot on the intangible side of it. So that's something about us as a profession and where we're going and what we're doing. Who deals with buildings? Architects. Architects. Who deals with memories? Public. Is there a profession? Councillors. Councillors. <laughs> 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 That's awkward. <laughs> mm. Mm. Who deals with landscapes? Farmers. Farmers. In other words, there are. What often happens in heritage is that we live in different silos. So. Farmers, landscape people deal with landscape. Engineers, archaeologists deal with industrial heritage. Um, you know, different different professions deal with different aspects of heritage, which is fine. But that actually can become a problem and a barrier when we come to deal with real science. What, what would stop me from throwing this pen into the rubbish bin? Environmental awareness. Okay, what do you mean? So, recycling. whether it's reusable, Find recycling? Yeah. Okay, yeah. what else would stop me throwing it away? Emotional attachment. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it might have been given to me by my grandmother. <laughs> okay, so there might be an emotional attachment. Ownership it might not be yours to throw away. It might not be mine, <laughs> yeah. It's chemistry, but also it's manufacture, how it's made, what that, and that's telling me about construction. It doesn't have replacing canisters, so we're quite a throwaway culture. So it's telling us about it's telling us about our attitudes to um, disposable. So it's telling us about social attitudes. What else is it telling me about? Design history. Okay, design history. What else am I learning about? The size of our hands. Yes, actually, I mean, you know, opposable thumbs and all that one. That's the one. You know, what stops me throwing this pen away is not necessarily whether it's a pen and not even necessarily whether it actually works or not, although that's a big factor in it. It is, of course, as you've all spotted, the value that we attach to it. What makes this worth keeping, especially when it's not working? It's still useful, exactly, that we've still got a reason to be in it. Why else? 
because of where it's situated. Okay, because where it is, its location, yeah, might be important. Why else might it be important? Building practices of it. I tell you, it might tell us about something about the technology um, and the technology of buildings. What else? It's economic value, both as a... Okay, it might have economic value. Revenue. It tells you something about the place it's located, it tells you something about York. Okay, so it, again, it's back to this thing about evidence. It's telling us something about the place that we're in. This aesthetic value. Okay, it may just plain be beautiful. Lots of places like that. War memorials. Yes. Any type of war memorial. Any any place that has um, bullet holes in the wall. Yeah. Um, this could go on. Uh, so the reasons why we remember places and why they have value are not necessarily pleasant. Mm -hmm. Give me what what word would you use for that? Confrontational. Confrontational. Okay, so there may be confrontational. Right? There's another good word which I like that the um, Canadians use, which is commemorative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes places commemorate um, events. Mm -hmm. When you're listing a building, which of these values do you take into account? <laughs> I heard that, huh? Just for that, Don, you can answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Only a very small one. Okay, tell me. Um, oh, bugger, I've never, I've never been in listed buildings, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You've got to get him out of his comfort zone. Significance. Somehow. No, the significance is not in there. Okay, what, come on, who knows Rarely. the legislation? Rarely. What does the, land, what does the legislation say for listed building? What does it exactly say? Architectural and historic interest, isn't it? Special architecture and historic interest. So we're, which is special architect, special, special interest? Is that beautiful, that's good. We might get beautiful in there. Are we going to get safe in there? No. No. People? No. 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 Rare and quiet? Rare. 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 Rarity. Okay, we'll get rarity in there. Top. Top is just in the last. Yeah. Okay, yeah, rare. You would get people. Yeah, beautiful. What else are we going to get in there? Innovative. Innovation, we might get in there. Technology, we might get in there. Okay. Can you list things because they're inspiring? Different levels of value. Personal community. Thank you. Personal community. What else? Local. Regional. What else? National. National. And what else? O U V. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do values change? Yes. yes. What are some of the ways in which values change? Sorry? Society changes. Society changes. How else do values change? Mm -hmm. With age or person? Okay, person with person. age. Yep. The older something is, the more important it is. A scrap of paper from yesterday is not as important as a scrap of paper from 100 years ago. What else? Economics. Economics, okay. Technology. How else do values change? What's the main way in which values change? Generational. Distance in time is one of the factors, and generation, I think that's part of the same thing. I think that's the kind of age distance thing. <coughs> Anybody had the experience of the more you get to know a site, the more your perception of its value changes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Knowledge. Absolutely. Knowledge and closeness. Okay, so what we're dealing with is a situation where why we keep things is because they're important. The range of values is huge. Those range of va those values are not fixed. They have different levels. It's incredibly complicated, isn't it? Here is a helpful picture of a fried egg. It's what I call the fried egg of value. In the centre of the yolk on fried egg are those values that we can use to list things or schedule things. They tend to be above a certain, certain threshold and they tend to be focused on things like beauty, aesthetics, technology, innovation. They tend not to deal with peace, tranquility, personal connections, or all those other immunity values. When you designate a site, 
you take into account those fairly narrow range of values. When you manage a site, you have to deal with all those wider things. Think about a public park. It might be protected because it's designed by Capability Brown. But when you manage it, who do you have to deal with? And the dog walkers. And the four-year-olds. And the four-year-olds. Exactly. So which is it more important to understand if you're a park manager? The history of capability around the psychology of a four-year-old. <laughs> Um, what are some of the things that we need to do? We need to enjoy it. What else do we need to do if we're going to hand it on to future generations? Maintain it. Maintain it. What else? Care. We need to care for it. What else are we going to need? Monitor. We need to use it. What else? Educate people. What else? To know it, learn it. We need to know about it. What else? We need to find funding. What else? Document it. We need to document it. What else? <coughs> about the other side of that question, if, if we're here to not just enjoy things now but hand them on to future generations, what are some of the things that can damage heritage? Lack of management. Lack of management. Give more detail. <coughs> Be more specific. You might have too much use. Okay, but, but too much use or the wrong use. Mm -hmm. What else can damage heritage? Al alienate people. Mm -hmm. Okay, alienate people. Alienate. How do you alienate people? <laughs> Um, make it the preserve of experts. Yeah. Experts, all right. On this chart, we wrote down all the things we need to do to hand heritage on to the future. On this chart, we wrote down all the things that can potentially damage heritage. Is there any similarity between these charts? Mm -hmm. Anything else on both charts? Health and safety. Anything else on both charts? Use. Anything else on both charts? Planning. Planning. Am I making a bigger point here? <laughs> Lots of things on both charts. The process of managing heritage is to understand what have you got, why does it matter, what's happening to it, and then decide what you're going to do about it. If we start with a traditional management perspective, which is with our aims and objectives, you know, and our mission statement, mm -hmm. we are starting there. And therefore, we're starting with a huge propensity to damage what it was that we care about. If we start at this side, we're going to do a much better job. And for me, what make something part of the heritage. What makes this pen worth keeping is not whether it's a pen or even necessarily whether it works or not, although that's a good big part of it, but it's the value that we place on it. The other important thing about the process and what we did here was when we talked about heritage, you talked as much to me about intangible heritage as you did about physical heritage. It took me a little bit of a while to get you out of your comfort zone of buildings and monuments into the natural heritage. But either way, when we're talking about heritage, for me, it's not, is it a building, is it a site, is it a monument, is it an object, is it a collection, is it a railway train? But it's this great big in intangible melange of tangible and intangible heritage that makes place in the broadest and most integrated sense. When we put significance into the sausage machine of designation, we kill it. For me, value is something much broader, much vaguer, much harder to pin down. But if we do nothing else as heritage professionals, it's our job to listen for, hear, and facilitate and understand that concept of value and translate it into a way that helps us to protect and look after places. And when I'm talking about looking after things, I'm looking after things in a very broader sense of managing, thinking about that part, thinking about the people who use them, thinking about all those wider senses of what a place is all about. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm interested in value. It's how I think about value. It's how value relates to heritage management and how that critical thing of what have you got, why does it matter, what's happening to it, 
and what are we going to do about it are for me so very critically important. Thank you.